welcome to the Northern Counties East League podcast. I'm Richard Watts. I'm now joined by League General Manager Matt Jones. So, hello everybody and welcome to the Northern Counties East League podcast. We'll start with a look back at the FA Vars fixtures which took place last weekend. Congratulations go to Albion Sports and Woonwell Town who booked their place in the second round where they would join Hallam and Silsden, who so far have been exempt. They come into the competition at this stage. They may yet be joined by Wakefield, whose game on Sunday was postponed due to a waterlogged pitch, and that will now be played on this coming Saturday. And while Northern Counties East League clubs did very well in this year's FA Cup competition, it's fair to say the FA Vars have been a little underwhelming, with just four or possibly five with Wakefield, teams through to the last 128. For comparison, we had seven teams in last season's second round, so slightly worse off than we were at this stage last year. Whilst Albion Sports were in FA Vars action this weekend, Penniston Church, Golkey United and Silsden all took advantage and moved above Albion in the league, putting Albion Sports down to fourth place. All three clubs recorded victories. Penniston had an impressive 3-0 win at Rossington, Maine to go back to the top. Golkey United moved into second after beating Goole 2-0 and Silsden moved up to third place with a 1-0 win against Hallam. It's looking like a very exciting promotion race in prospect, very tight at the top, with just three points separating the top four sides at the moment. After their defeat, Goole remained rooted to the bottom of the league, six points from safety, and they've picked up just five points from their 14 games so far. In Division 1, Horbury Town are now six points clear at the top after beating Glasshout and Welfare 3-0. Durnham District are up to the second place after winning 2-1 away at Louthstown, while the biggest winners of the day were Brigtown, who won 7-0 away at Nostal, with Danny North and Scott Hutchinson both scoring hat-tricks, the latter scoring his three goals in a 13-minute spell. At the bottom, Yorkshire Amateur, who didn't have a league game this last weekend as they were in FA Vars action, they're now 11 points from safety, with just four points from their 14 games so far. The Amers have not won a league game since the opening weekend of the season back in July. There's a busy weekend ahead, with one FA Vars tie, the aforementioned Wakefield game going ahead, nine games in the Premier Division and ten in Division 1. And probably the pick of the day is first versus third in the Premier Division as Penniston Church welcomes Silsden. Whichever game you're going to watch, we thank you as always for your amazing support. Welcome to Seasons Past with Libby Edwards. In this episode, I'm looking back to the 2005. 2006 season. The Premier Division contained the 18 teams from the previous season, plus promoted Garforth Town and Sutton Town. The league was won by Buxton, who won 30 and drew five of their 38 games, finishing with 95 points. A 9 0 home win against Glapwell was their biggest win. David Reeves finding the back of the net six times in this game. Liversidge finished second. They won 25 and drew 5, finishing on 80 points. In third place were Harrogate Railway who finished on 73 points. Brodsworth Miners Welfare finished bottom. Second bottom were Long Eaton United and third bottom Maltby Main. Newcomers to Division 1 were Teversal, who joined from the Central Midlands and relegated Borough Wash Victoria. The league was won by Carlton Town. They finished on 73 points, with 23 wins and 4 draws. Runners-up were Retford United. They won 20 and drew 5, finishing on 65 points. In third place were Tad Caster Albion who finished on 64 points. In the 16-team first division, Yorkshire Amateur finished bottom. Biggest home win of the season was Buxton's 9-0 win against Glapwell. Biggest away was 6-0 which Buxton, Harrogate Railway and Sutton Town all managed. The League Cup was won by Liversidge. This season the final was a two-legged affair, the aggregate score, Liversidge 5-Sheffield 1. 
Beaten semi-finalists were Buxton and Selby Town. The President's Cup was won by Buxton, who defeated Selby Town 2-0 on aggregate. Three of the league's clubs made the second qualifying round in the FA Cup on Thorpe Welfare, who lost to Rossendale. Staveley Miners Welfare, who lost to Cogenhoe, and Glapwell, who lost to Hales Owen. In the FA Vars Arnold Town made it to the fourth round, Buxton made the fifth round, but it was Pickering Town, who got the furthest making it to the sixth round. They beat Oldham, Dunstan, Tavistock and Vimbourne before losing to Nantwich. <laughs>
players, players, I'd be raising my game and playing in front of a crowd like that because yeah, I think it would do, wouldn't it, for any team really? Yeah, terrific attendance. And there's Nesbury nil, Eccles Hill nil. Um, good win for Parkgate three one against Beverly because they've been in decent form. Beverly, um, Pickering one, Albion four. Albion going well. Nathan Cartman getting a lot of goals and Sackley two, Rosington two. Uh, moving into the Division One, Armthorpe one, Selby two. 143. That one's not a bad crowd, is it? No, it's, it's a good crowd, that, yeah. yeah. Good crowd, yeah. Uh, Brig in the goals, Brig six, Maltby one. That, that's a fantastic result, isn't it? Because uh, Maltby one of the stronger teams in the division. Yeah, they're going well, aren't they? they? Certainly have. Um, Club Thorn three, Louth nil. Uh, good Dur- result for Club Thorn. Durnan District uh, 245 there. Denham District 3, Ilkley 2. Um, Dronfield 2, Horbury 3. Horbury just march on, don't they? Uh, Glass yeah, Houghton yeah. 2, Harrogate 1. South Leeds 2, Wurz- Wurzborough Bridge 3. That's a really good win for Wurzborough Bridge at South Leeds. Uh, Swallow Nest 1, Woonwell 2. And then Side, the big one at the bottom. Wakefield 8, Yorkshire Amateur 0. Yeah, well, I think it's um, I said probably I think it's our second highest scoreline in the NCL. Um, but yeah, we the obviously since Junior left as manager, we had um, our assistant Ian step in as caretaker manager, or I think they call them interim managers these days, don't they? I'm a little bit older, I still call them caretaker managers, but I think the <laughs> the modern term is interim manager, isn't it? From, from what, anything we've seen with Lee Carsley. Um, but yeah, so he's he's come in and had a six-two win at home at Swallownest, and then an eight-nil win at home at Yorkshire Amateur. But I think in both cases, a we were looking to bounce back after a couple of bad results ourselves, and we've kind of caught them at the right time. And he just settled down by by playing a very simple formation, not overcomplicating it, and getting them to go out and play football do what they do, they know the positions and not do anything too complicated and overthinking it and the results came from it. And obviously since then we've now got um, new management appointed as well. Yeah, tell us about the new uh, management team. Steve Bordel and ne- Lee Needham coming across from Clear Cross. Across from the cross. Uh, from Clear Cross, obviously they were at Shirebrook last year. Um and yeah, they were appointed last week, um, but we haven't had a, had a match yet. As we'll come to as we're going through the fixtures, you'll see that we've got two matches postponed since <laughs> since that one. So the eight 0 that we're talking about so long ago, back on the twelfth, that was our last game. Uh, so hopefully we'll get the first game with them this weekend. They certainly did the business last season, didn't they, with Shybrook? Yeah, and it's a very different. Uh, way to how we play but I think as I've said before I think um, we were discussing with Adam last time when he was on the show as well We've I think we've overplayed sometimes and played ourselves into trouble sometimes too much playing it out from the back and didn't always have that steel that I think we've needed through the spine of the team sort of you know the the tall maybe aggressive players that can maybe win you games more at this level rather than just good football and maybe with these guys coming in, they might mix it up a little bit. And yeah, cause I think any any management team usually likes to have their own players. I know they've moved, when they've moved before, they've had players that have gone with them. Um, so whether they have names in mind, I've not seen any, any signings as yet. Maybe they'll go through and see how we get on for a couple of weeks, what we've got, and then see what they need to improve, perhaps. Um, but yeah, and, and and I think it's quite it's it's the kind of appointment I wanted. I said I wanted someone, and we we've tried inexperienced managers now we've got someone who knows this level and, and has succeeded at it so yeah looking good for the future hopefully and 408 there what a fantastic crowd it must have been one of the top ones in the country for that uh that, step. that particular weekend yeah i think i think i think at step six that weekend i think we were fourth from memory it's a while back but i did post it on social media because i did i saw it on the on x from non-league crowds i think we were fourth that weekend from memory 
overall. Because Yorkshire Amateur aren't known for a big away support, were they? So I presume it's all Wakefield yeah. people there. Yeah, they didn't have many. Um, I mean, we had, it, it helped, we, we had a lot of the junior teams that day because it was Juniors Day. So we got a lot of the youth teams um, had come to support the team. Um, and we made a bit of a push, obviously, of, of trying to get behind the team ready. With, ready for the future, obviously, with, with Junior going and with, with Ian in charge. So we had a good push on getting people on the on the door on the day. Just, and then we move into um, midweek. I'll just skirt through the, the midweek, but there was one really outstanding result, I thought, which was uh, Beverly Town 3, Albion Sports nil, And uh, also the same night, the, the Bradford Derby Campion 4, Eccles Hill nil. Yeah. That's something beat, for Beverly, isn't it, that? Yeah, yeah to beat Albion, because Albion went there at that particular time. They were top of the league, wasn't they, that night? And, yeah. Um, yeah. But for Beverly to win 3-0, oh, it's a tremendous result, man. Tremendous. They, 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 must have, they must have played really well that night. Everything clicked. Because um, yeah. Albion, they've got a good defence, Albion, but so for them to concede three, uh, yeah, very, very excellent mm. from mm. that. Starting to find the feet at this level a little bit, aren't they, Beverly? Yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah, settling in nicely. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, I, I can, I can get, I can second that. Well, I was a bit further down than that. <laughs> they're looking More quickly, shadowing. Looking <laughs> quickly, moving to Saturday and looking at um, FA Vars. Albion so Sports we, went through on penalties against Borough Rangers. Just, we'll just go back one though, Richie, because Friday night was the Maltby versus Club Thorn. Maltby again. At home, but Club Thorn got a good winner. I thought it was a good winner. So it might be that for mm. Club Thorn. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. That's two, that's two matches. The one on the trot, and they're starting to, they're, as they're starting to find their feet at this level now. I think you know. Yeah. Um, one that particularly stands out from the FA Vars on Saturday: Wombwell three hands with two. Yeah, that, First that's division that's, beating Premier beating Premier Division. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good result for one. Well, that means to to, um, to beat the team uh, hands of the you know, league above them, and yeah, outstanding result. Outstanding. The only other yeah. success that day was um, Albion, wasn't it? Everybody else went out from from yeah. ours, so yeah. Yeah. Albion pulling off a win on penalties. On penalties, yeah, yeah, yes, that's 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 right. After um, scoring an equaliser in the ninetieth minute with a penalty, now the pressure must have been on Nathan Cartman for that one. Yeah, blimey. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so that's, that's just, two, two, two teams through, anyhow. Yeah. So I mean, just looking at Yorkshire Amateur, considering what happened to them the week before to, to only lose 2 0 to New Mills is yeah. uh, not a bad result, really. No, not really. No, no, no. Um, Moving to Saturday, I didn't see this one live, but I've seen all the footage afterwards. Foot Barton four Pickering two. It looked um, quite an even game, and then Barton really got going in the last few minutes and uh, saw it out. So that's a that's a very good win for them. Um, Bottesford beating Parkgate two nil, Eccles Hill and Winterton nil nil. Um, just only sixty there. That's disappointing. Team like. Uh, Eccles Hill only gets 60 through the gate. I presume Bradford City must have been at home. Yeah, it must have been. Must have been. Uh, Frickley, good, another good win for Frickley. 3 1 at home to Nairsborough. Um, and then Golka 2 goal, goal, goal nil, Bob. Yeah, well, if, if Aaron if Aaron was here, it'd say, it, it say you can tell me they played well. Well, they did, they did look for, for first first half, first 30 minutes. We matched Golka, I thought. Defence, because maybe Gorka was second when we played them, and we're bottom. And it was thirty minutes. It looked, it looked a lot positive compared to the previous, the previous Saturday. You know when we played uh, quickly, but then after thirty minutes, it always seemed ex players who used to play for us. They always seemed to score against us as ex players. And and Callum Petch, um, he scored after thirty minutes. Uh, he made a break away and put it through our um, through our goalkeeper's legs, and they went one up at half time. And then second half again, it, they had actually we we, we nearly scored. Goalkeeper cleared two off the line, and we hit the post. Oh. Just that need, need that bit of luck in front of goal, but they got a yeah. second after sixty five minutes. And then 
Damien, that right was on, on the wall, really, but 2 0, I suppose, because we have been losing by some biggest scores, unfortunately. So 2 0. Every suppose. cloud. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm grasp. You can tell, you can tell, Sai, I'm grasping, grasping at straws uh, <laughs> to try and find a bit of daylight somewhere, you know. But um, it's not easy being a, a Viking supporter at the moment. But we hope for better days and, and keep the faith. This is when you, this is when your loyal supporters, your true supporters, yeah. you've got to support your teams through thick and thin. Absolutely, uh, and, and it's pretty thin at the moment. Um, but there you go. There you go. Yeah. So anyhow, that was Golkar two goal nil. That's my, on that was my take on on, on the match. Anyhow, and uh, Rosington nil, Penniston three. Um, Penniston coming back into form. They've beaten Barton, uh, which I think I uh, missed earlier. Which was uh, an absolute wonder strike. They they weren't very confident to start with. I think they'd lost five on the trot, but they scored a heck of a goal from uh, Nathan Kitely. Then Barton were down to 10 men and that was game, game over, really. Anyway, Penniston follow it up with a 3-0 win against Rosington, Maine. So they're back back up and running. The cracking games. Silsden won and performance by Silsden. Silsden won, Hallam nil. The 100 no, there. No, the good result for Silsden, that. Yeah. Uh, and Tadcaster 2, Thackley 4. Another good win for Thackley. Yeah. It is, yeah, good, good, good away win that. Moving into Division One, Horbury again. Horbury three, Glass out and nil. Ilkley nil, Dronfield four. Bit Lauf of a surprise one. that one. Yeah, because Ilkley are up there, so that, that's a, that's a good win for Dronfield. Is that you know if, if we're picking them out, Ilkley mm. have been hunting for the playoff salt so far this season. Dronfield mid table, so that's a good win for them. Especially at 4-0 as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And another big game, Louth 1, Durnan District 2. Uh, Nossel 0, Briggs 7, Briggs bringing the goals again. Yeah, and, and I see that on that in that match, two players scored at hat-tricks. Daniel North <laughs> and Scott Scott Hutchinson both got hat-tricks. Danny is, North, um, the ex-Barton manager. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like to say it. <laughs> but he's knocking the guy. He knows, where, he knows where the net is. Yeah, yeah. You know? he's, I mean, fantastic finisher. I mean, he, he got a lot of goals for Grimsby and in the League of Ireland when he played there. So he's a terrific if, finisher. Is it? I wonder if he wants to come to goal. We could do with a yes. terrific finisher. Yeah, <laughs> it's no surprise that he's scoring goals in this at this level. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame yeah. he didn't play himself more often when he was manager, really. But yeah, you can probably understand. you can understand why, can't you? Yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, can. Selby three, Addersley one, Shelley nil, Armthorpe two. I'm just, I'm just noting that Selby two hundred and fifty three. There, that's a pretty decent turnout, isn't it? Yeah, well, they got some, Selby getting some good gates, aren't they? Well supported. And South Leeds back on it. South Leeds five, Appleby, Frodringham one. They're, they're struggling, aren't they, at Frod? Yeah, they are certainly yeah. struggling. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely struggling, unfortunately. And quickly moving forward during the week. Um, yeah. The, uh, yeah, the the League Cup second round, one that's, again, Yorkshire amateur holding Al Albion sports before going out on penalties. That's, yeah, that, that that's, was that, that's good, is that? That's terrific, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty the, the you see the crowd there though. Only yeah, 38. 38, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's a shame that you know they don't get one more support than that, you know. It is, um, yeah. And it's not like they're in a small catchment area. That's that's the frustrating yeah. thing for them, I think, as well. If you know, if, if I was looking from their point of view, they're in a yeah. very well populated area of Leeds. Yeah, um, yeah, they're just not getting people through the door. No, I, I see in the West Riding Cup because there were three matches in the West Riding Cup that night. Outstanding result for me was Armthorpe beating guys with two one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really good result too. But I mean, maybe maybe guys, Lee, I might be doing them injustice. They might have for the a weekend team, but even though that's a good result for Armthorpe beating guys, Lee, 
Yeah, yeah I think they, I think Geisley and Farsley are both in this cup, and and I've seen before that they don't do so well. So I think they must put some sort of under 18s or reserves in there a little bit just to fill out the sides, give them some games. But like you said, that's you know Geisley's got what three, four levels above. What what are Geisley now? Are they step three? Yeah, I think they are. Yeah, so that's that's an outstanding result, really. Even so, that to Graham thought to win two one like that. Yeah, but well, what see that James James Baxendale's gone back, hasn't he? So he might have gotten back on track um, with the players, etc. Because that, that is a good result. So that's you go to it, Bob, we've got uh, Beverly against Gould on uh, Tuesday night. Oh. Well, well, before we talk about Beverly Gould. We'll talk about yeah. Harbury. Harbury, West Riding Cup, that was a good result. The big Sackley yeah, 3 2. That's trying to look at one point as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is a cracking then, result. Then Wakefield, it was postponed. Why was it postponed? Do, we, do you know that? Too? Apparently, there was. Um, a, a, uh, we got reported there was an issue with the changing rooms at Club Thorn. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Um, right. but so they couldn't host it for that reason. So that one's now rescheduled for us. Um, after, of course, we were talking about the FA Vars earlier. We were due to play on Sunday, so we are still in the in the in the in the FA Vars. It's just that our match in the first round hasn't taken place yet. It got rained off, um, yeah. and um, referee called it off at two o'clock after a, just as a coach load of. North oh. Shields fans that arrived all the way from up there. Oh, they no. were not happy, oh, all the players. Yeah. But yeah. And that's, that's, they were saying, so why couldn't it have been inspected and called earlier? But from what I've heard from the club, the, the pitch was okay at like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. It was then the rain downpour that we had between then and 2 o'clock, which just made it unplayable. Right. So I understand the frustration. Um, and I think if I'd spent... I don't know, what is it, two hours, three hours? I don't know how far it is away from North Shield. Two hours but, uh, plus, I would think. Yeah, yeah if I spent hours, that yeah. long on a, on, a, on a coach shot and yeah. paid for it to get all the way to the ground for it to be called off, I think I'd be a little bit annoyed too. But, um, yeah, that's, it's football sometimes, isn't it? Especially this level. About it, can you? Yeah, we've not got all weather pitches, have we? No, no. Yeah, unfortunately, not, no. That's a so, big yeah, Is there a new date for that fixture? Yeah, we're replaying that this Saturday now, so our league fixtures off, and um, this Saturday we've got the uh, the rematch. Well, not the rematch, but the rescheduled match uh, with North Shields. So looking forward to that one because it's the first time we've been in this competition at this round. We've never got to the first round proper, so looking forward to that bit of history. Yeah, good, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Well, good game. Yeah. Right. Well, 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 well. It's gonna. This is gonna be a tale of war. Unfortunately, I'm sounding like a <laughs> broken record. I'm sounding like a broken record. So, Beverly Goo, Tuesday night. Well, for 44 minutes, 43, 44 minutes, it was an even game. It was nil-nil. And then when you're at the bottom, you find this, you don't get any luck whatsoever. Oh, Our centre-forward, <laughs> Our centre forward, James Sulato, he was brought down in the box. And we all cried penalty. And it looked a penalty, a stonewall penalty to me. And I was standing with three Barton fans. And they thought it was a penalty. But the referee didn't get it, give it. That was nil nil. It was played on. And then Barton went down the field and scored to make it one nil at half time. And it should have been, it was an injury because James, he didn't come out for the second half. He was injured. And um, then 50th and 52nd minute, they got two quick goals, made it 3 0. And then it was just a tale of war then. And they followed it by a fourth and the 62nd and the 87th. They had five different scorers, Beverly. Um, but after the third goal went in, it was a painful, well, embarrassing watch, really. And um, if, if the only glimmer I can, I always look for a glimmer of light, was the first 44 minutes. But after it went 3 0 down, see, confidence when you're at the bottom, confidence is also, rock, I think, is, is rock bottom with the team. Yeah. We need, yeah. To, we, need to, we need to get in front, score a goal, and then that yeah. will lift the team. It, it, it's, Something to hold on to. Yeah, yeah. unless you unless you're in that team playing for them, it's hard to to say. But to me, the, the Afs, we're short of confidence, and, and we need we need something. So this Saturday we we're, we're playing uh, Nairsborough at home. Well, Nairsborough's just two places above us, so it's a it's a big game for going with that. But we'll talk about that when we get a bit further down. But so, so yeah, so it was a tale of war. But um, first time we've been to Norwood. And I felt sorry for our goal support because we must have took a 30, 40 
school supporters there that night, mm -hmm. and um, and it's a sorry to uh, to see what they saw. You know, it's um, it's a nice ground though, isn't it? I mean, I know it's obviously taken away yeah. from your results yeah. stuff. Um, when we went there for the last couple of seasons, it's been one of my favourite trips of the season. To be fair, yeah. um, and, and I found them. The fans are yeah. really like the the volunteers and the fans really welcoming as well. Oh, talking about the volunteer, yes, I'm glad you mentioned the volunteer. I, you know, I, I found our listener uh, uh, Sarah. Was it Sarah? Sarah to Echoes Hill the other yeah. week. Well, uh, we had another. Uh, we, I found my other uh, our other listener, James, <laughs> volunteer. He recognised my dulcet tones. He said, "You're Bob from the podcast." Well, there you go. So, so we've got two listeners at least. Bob, Bob. Podcast Bob, you are. Podcast <laughs> yeah. Bob. Yeah. So yeah. So, but it was a nice, it's a nice ground. We, I mean, the chairman, he, he come out to talk to us. Um, and, you know, so that's very, they were very engaging. It's a nice, nice setup with everybody. Yeah. I just hope we uh, get a chance to go next year in the league. Um, yeah. That, that's what we hope. But they are building. I do believe they're building a new stand behind the, at the far end because they've all got this concrete base. So I think they're trying to build a stand there. So that seems I should have. That's what that's what I heard anyhow. So um, fair dues to make that that will improve the ground if they if they do get promotion to because when you do get promotion you've got to upgrade your ground, haven't you? You've got to pass uh, a strict criteria. So um, yeah, and uh, they always get the good crowds. They're always two hundred plus at Beverly. So oh, yeah. there's plenty of potential to uh, get even yeah. bigger. I think it was 287 the other night, so that was a good crowd. Yeah, um, yeah. Was night. So yeah, so that that was the thing. We just well, we just need to stop conceding the scoring. It's easy as that, really. <laughs> you oh, should be manager, Bob. I, I, I wish it was. No, no. That's your team. That's, that's your team talk, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, let's move just on. stop conceding and score goals. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, Brian, Clough, Brian Clough said, "Football is a simple game." There's a, there's a net there, and you've got to put the ball in it, and that's you know, and keep the other, and keep it out from the other end. It's as yeah. simple as that. But um, it's not easy to um, to produce, unfortunately. Another, and uh, then on to on to Wednesday, another good win for Silsden, four one at Winterton, to put yes. uh, Silsden top of the table. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. That that was a good result. Yeah, they're playing well, Silsden. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, well, they started mm -hmm. off well last season, but then they faded a bit. But they don't seem to be fading at the moment. They seem to be, if anything, getting stronger. Yeah, I mean, last season when I first saw them, I thought uh, these are going, these are going to be the champions this year. And like you say, they did drop off, but uh, they've had sort of like the dodgy spell, haven't they? And they've come, in, they're coming strong again. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. I'm backing up, looking at Wednesday. What we were saying about the the step three side in fact Farsley Celtic I think they're step two aren't they I think, yeah. I think they're in the van around the north oh yeah that's um, right yeah Far Farsley three South Leeds five not taking anything away from South Leeds for the win there but I think the fact that Farsley had 147 attendance there which would be very low for them mm -hmm. I, I'm, I assume so anyway for that level I would expect them to get more than that so I would expect that might be a more of a reserve side or something that's probably played for that one um, yeah. but still a good win for South Leeds yeah, and, and, the cup there. yeah, and on the same night in the West Riding Cup, good win for Selby. That echoes mm. too. That's a good win. Giant killing, taking one from a higher division. Yeah, yeah and then and then Campion beat Steeton two one, didn't they in the West Riding Cup? Nice. Where is Steeton? I don't even. I don't, I don't know Steeton. Yeah, no, I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone got knowledge of Steeton? No, okay. No. <laughs> Yeah. Well, they're it's out only... now anyway, so they're out. They're yeah. out of the cup, so it doesn't matter. I can, I can tell you where I can tell you where they are. Really, they're in the West Riding somewhere because they're in the West Riding Cup. So, well, there you go. Well, yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you make of the um, top of the table, Bob Silsden, Penison, Golker, Halvey, and Thackley? How do you who do you fancy out of that lot? Well, well, well has <laughs> played three games more, haven't they? But Golker oh. and Silsden, they're both going strong. So it's Albion. It's it's a, it's quite a um, quite exciting race, really. Um, I mean, when you've got Golkar second, Sills in itself third, third, and Albion fourth, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's really looking really strong, and, and there's not many points between them all. No, um, we're not. Gonna, there's not going to be anybody pulling clear this season, I don't think, is there? 
I think between first I think you can even count Thackley and Hallam out as well. I mean, Hallam have yeah. been doing... I know mm. they've had a bit patchy, but they put some great results. Thackley did well last season, especially towards the end, so I think they'll come strong again. Yeah. Um, the winner is difficult, but certainly the playoffs, I think the whole battle is going to be very entertaining this season. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, Thackley's fifth, and they're only five points behind the leaders, so um, that tells you five teams would just swap five points between them. You know, it's top, the top five, which is good. What do you make of... Um... How things are shaping up in Division One, Si? It's looking like Horbury and Wumble are the sort of the two that are going to be at this stage heading for the title. And if you're putting money on it, they're the two that are only lost one game each. Um, Wumble have obviously got three games in hand at the moment, so it's a bit of a skew with table because it look looks like they're further back, but they've got three in hand. Um, they're the two standout teams from the division so we're playing them one well next Tuesday so that's I'm quite interested to see how they've improved from last season um, when we played there see if they're you know what's different again though Derner up there Maltby Brig are starting to find some form now yeah they are yeah maybe um, Atherley couple of iffy results they're sort of hanging on to that playoff spot aren't they um, and then we've got at least two games in hand on most of those teams above us. Um, in fact, after this weekend, it's probably going to be three because obviously we're in the Vars when people are playing in the league. So, yeah, um, yeah we're going to have games to catch up as well. So hopefully we can get into that uh, playoff mix. I don't think we're going to get all the way up to the uh, the title ambitions this mm-hmm. season. I think that's probably gone now. Um, I think, like I say, Aubrey and Mumble are going to be the two to beat. And Brig, Ilkley, South Leeds all going pretty well, aren't they? Selby Town. It's going to be an interesting race, that, isn't it's it? It's one of those divisions where, um, I think in both Premier and the Division 1, but anyone can still beat another team on its day, though. Like I say, Ilkley, yeah. you know, they were going great, and then they, then they lose that one to Dronfield. Um, so you've got to be on your guard at every game, really. And that's yeah. what the two teams that are really you know pushing at the top, Aubrey and Warmwell, have been. You know, they've they've put away the, the bigger teams um, and the teams that they're playing at the bottom. Yeah. Apart from one each. Mm. Mm. So one was Wakefield. I'm just going to drop that one in there just 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 for a bit of glory hunting for my team. Yeah, we're the one that <laughs> took the Horbury one. But... <laughs> and we're going to try and make it hot with two for one will on Tuesday, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So looking at games coming up on um, Friday night, Albion Sports home to Tadcaster. Yeah. Um, Aversley, Shelley, Dernan District, Maltby. That's uh, a pretty good one on top of the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you've got your big one, site. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they've won it before of North Shields. Yeah. They were the first team to win it in extra time. There's a little fact for you. First team to win the FA Vars in extra time at Wembley. Oh, I didn't know that. So, oh, something right. like, I can't remember when it was now, so I read up on this, but I've lost it. I think it's 2016, I guess, something like that. Um, so they've got pedigree in, in the cup. But at least they've been there. That's good. That's good. Got some history there. Yeah, and in the Prem, I see we've got um, Barton Campion. Barton yeah, Arby Campion. Yeah, it should be a decent game. Yeah. Tough game. Beverly, yeah, Beverly Rossington, that'd be a that'd be a good game. Beverly Rossington. That looks good, yeah. I was thinking that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Silsden. Yeah, I was just yes, you you still me thunder there. I've got I was coming to that one. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. <laughs> I, 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 I know I would say, even though he's not here, he, I do that with him. And now he would say to me, You stole me thunder, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yes, but so Peniston Sills, and that's that's that is a standout game in the Premier League this um, uh, this week. But at the bottom, the fight at the bottom must be must be right team goal versus Nairsbury. Well, it's it's important. It's an important match for both teams. I mean, yeah. if Nairsbury win, they're pulling away. If we win, we're catching up because we are six points behind Winterton, who are second bottom. So there is a bit Winter. of a gap there, which, which is very worrying. Very worrying. Um, so Winterton we need to. Got a tough got... task, don't they? 
I was going to say, have Nesbo got a good away record or anything that I can put the jinx on for you just to help you out like I did with the goal cap? Well, I'm not, not sure that far. It, <laughs> it, 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 after, after coming after, on Tuesday, after losing 5 0, it took me about 24 hours to get over that, really. From So I've not studied all that, that much, really. Uh, I was still shell shocked from losing uh, 5 0, you know. So, anyhow, moving on, moving on quickly. Goal cap yeah. on to Winston. Um, Frickly on to Hallam, uh, Bottisred Pickering. Um, so some good games there. And yeah. then if we're moving through, or, Hans, or Hansworth versus Fackley as well, and in the Prem. No, and in not, easy one, t- not an easy team on their own pitch, are they, Hansworth? Oh, no. Especially on the, on the 4G as well, isn't yeah. it? You know, yeah. 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 And then Division One, Armthorpe South Leeds, Brig versus Selby. That'll be a good game, Brig Selby. Uh, Club Thorn Nostal, Dronfield Louth, Lass Alton Ilkley, Harrogate Railway versus Harbury. That should be a, a good game. I think Harrogate would give Harbury a good test there, I would imagine. Wormwell versus York Shamiches. I think Wormwell's at, at the top out there of the league. Yeah, yeah um, the, the, the third, but they've got games in hand. So, yeah, the, the, they're, they're, they're sort of a potentially joint top. Um, yeah, against to... s- struggling Yorkshire amateurs, so I think that's yeah. going to be a, a tough a home win on the on the coupon. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, Worsbury versus uh, Swallow Nest. So that's the that's the games for the. And I was I was looking at the FA Vars draw, looking just looking a bit ahead, um, because Hallam and Silsden got by, didn't they, to the second round? Oh, that's they've right. Now, yes, they've yeah. now joined it. So. Um, so Albion Sports have um, are drawn at home to Paddenham. Uh, Wormwell Town's away to Asheville. I'm not quite sure where Asheville is. No, I don't know them. No. Oh. Hallam's are home to New Mills. Well, we played New Mills um, before Yorkshire Amateur played them. So um, that'll be a, a good test for Hallam. Uh, and then uh, Silsden versus Ramsbottom. I don't, I don't think Ramsbottom is that far from Silsden, really, over the top there. And... Uh, that should be a good crowd. So, but so if if Wakefield gets through, who does Wakefield? We have Charnock Richard. Oh, we're, they're a pretty decent side, but and played them a few se- couple of seasons ago. Yeah, yeah. luckily we've got it at yeah. home if, if we got through. But yeah, from playing North Shields, then we've got not Charnock Richard, who I think they've someone said that they've had a buy until now because they were so they did so well last year. Yeah, they're I think a pretty good side. The top eight or the top sixteen from last season's Vars make it in, you know, get a buy mm. in this one. So yeah, that's going to be even tougher test. North Shields will be a tough test anyway. Um, but if we did get through that, then yeah, Chan at Richards um, certainly be one of the big. Well, would be the biggest game in our history, I expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so there's, there's, there's as I make it five teams. Well, if Wakefield win, of course, if Wakefield win, there'll be five teams trying the flag. In the FA Vars, hopefully. Yeah, let's hope so. Yeah, let's well, we're, hope we're, so, yeah. we're into the last minute, so just we're, we're not going to have much time to discuss the team of the week. But uh, well, my, well prefer, quickly, yeah, go on. Well, I prefer we, Silsden. Yeah, well, I was I was torn between Silsden, but I'm going to go for for one well in the Vars right. beating beating Hansworth. Yeah. That's that's mine. I'm picking so, Dronfield for their win at Ilkley. So I think that was just again against the form guide. So for me, that was sort of a, a bit of a turn up for the books, was that one? It was, yeah. Right, thank you. Enjoy your football, and we will uh, reconvene next week. Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks a See lot. See you next week, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. 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 That's it for this edition. If you've got any news for the podcast or you'd like to appear on the podcast, please email ncelpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.